Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic, host of Cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we're going to be talking about the MCU Endgame's box office and also what the future of the MCU is actually going to be looking like and we seem to have some indications, at least some early indications, of what the future of streaming for the Disney Streaming Plus service and also for Hulu and what Disney and Marvel are actually going to end up doing with both of those services. And so first off, let's give an update on the box office. So Avengers Endgame, $33 million plus on Tuesday is the best for the Disney MCU. And I had a couple people, couple people getting at me yesterday trying to say, hey, you know, did you see the giant drop off from Sunday to Monday? Isn't that not really good news? Do you still think the movie could end up breaking the record that Avatar set? I still say yes. And the reason why is because though the Monday was not great, especially in comparison to other MCU films, it was definitely not the worst drop off we've ever seen. And also having this success on Tuesday, because guess what? $5 Tuesdays are still very popular. So it was bound to make more than anyone else. I mean, normally you don't see it as as hot, you know, that much higher only because the, the, you know, the tickets are cheaper. And so the studios only get a little bit more of the cut from that than anywhere else. And so that's why you usually see that discrepancy between Tuesday and Monday, because you might have more tickets sold on Tuesday because more people are going to see it. But because they're paying about half as much, it usually doesn't really end up being all that much of a difference maker as far as the actual raw uh, raw numbers. But this is still something that is worth talking about because Avengers Endgame is still making some pretty decent money. In fact, among all Tuesdays, Endgame ranks third behind Star Wars The Force Awakens and Sony's 2012 The Amazing Spider-Man meaning that it is the best of the MCU so far and third best Tuesday for the Disney properties. Disney files their box office figures later in the morning and they're often a few bucks higher or lower than what the rivals see this early. Yesterday, Disney reported Endgame's Monday at 36.8 million. So again, about 3 million less, or rather 3, 3 million more than it did on Tuesday. But as I said, seeing that tickets cost about half as much on Tuesday, having it make 33 million is actually pretty damn impressive because it means that yes, more people saw it for half price, but that means so many more people saw it that it really didn't make much of a difference and it ended up having some pretty pretty good numbers and so now we see the running stateside total for endgame is at 427.38 meaning this film is definitely on pace to crash through the 500 million dollar mark and i would say probably get closer to the 700 maybe even north of 700 million and be the i think highest grossing MCU domestically of all time. I believe the only film that compares to it is actually Black Panther, which made around $700 million domestically. The big news, though, is going to be how much movie this makes overseas. And as we've already seen, it's already broken a billion dollars overseas alone. In the foreign market, it's already made well over a billion dollars. This po this bodes very well for the film. It's currently sitting right around $1.5 million. Again, assuming that it's made another 30 or so million today, which seems to be a pretty pretty safe bet, especially since a lot of theaters are still reporting a lot of seats being sold even during the week. This film has already crossed $1.5 billion, meaning that there is a very good chance, especially if there's only around a 50% drop-off, 50 to 60% drop-off. If it's going into the weekend close to 1.6, which seems to be the case, that means that even with that 60, you know, 50 to 60% drop, unless there's a gigantic drop-off from week one to week two, well north of 60, you're looking at this film crossing the $2 billion mark this weekend, which is insane when you think about it, seeing that that will grow that will outgross so many movies entire lifetime runs and so once it hits 2 billion where does it go from there well starting next week so not this week there's really not a whole lot of things coming out this week there's a couple of movies that really no one is going to be looking forward to or seeing everything is going to be Endgame and obviously who would want to compete against Endgame in week 2 which is the reason why I think that this film is going to cross the 2 billion dollar mark this weekend because it has almost no competition people are still going to see this movie in droves I know so many people that chose not to see it opening weekend because they didn't want to deal with the nonsense of the theater and so they're going to go see it on the next weekend. And also there's going to be some repeat viewers as well. Even though I've got my own issues with the movie, so many people overwhelmingly still enjoy it. I mean, have that subjectively joy, you know, have subjective joyous experience. And I'm not going to take that away from them. So if they want to sit through this three hour plot hole fest, go right ahead and do so. But now we're starting to get a little more actual numbers from the foreign market since obviously it takes a few, you know, a few extra days in order for them to get the proper breakdown. So as of the 30th, so as of yesterday, it has now made $389 million in China alone, which means that it has a very strong opening weekend, rather a second, uh, another strong second weekend. Its opening weekend was 175.6. I mean, this film is set to make well north of 400 million just in the, the country of China meaning that this film very well could get close to 500 plus million in China. And if 
The standard holds that usually films that do very well overseas and do well in China, that China usually makes up around a third of their entire total. It means that overseas alone, it could make easily $1.5 billion. And if it gets close to that $700 million, it's going to be well north of $2 billion. So the big question is, how much money does it make in China? How much money does it make in other parts of the world? It's just doing so well in so many places. In India, it's got $36 million. Mexico, $40 million. South Korea, $54 million, which is insane, $64 million in the United Kingdom, and of course, you can see it's doing well across the board, and this isn't even all of the countries reporting their totals. So this is indeed a great indication that the film is doing well consistently, is still making money, and that's why I think $2 billion this weekend seems very likely. As I said, normally you see around a 50 to 60% drop from week one to week two, sometimes a little bit more. In the case of Last Jedi, it was closer to 70%, which is why over time it kept dropping and ended up petering out around one point. 3 billion. This is going to, obviously, this already flown past 1.3 billion, so this has already made more than The Last Jedi did in its entire run. This film is making bank loads and will continue guaranteed. I, I Again, I'm predicting this right now. Look back this weekend and you will see when those weekend numbers come in, and I report that on the Geeks and Gamers channel, you're going to see me talk about how this movie has already made $2 billion because that is just how well it is doing. Now, what about the future of the MCU? Now, a lot of people have been speculating about what is going to happen to those Netflix shows. What is going to happen to Daredevil? What is going to happen to Punisher and all those shows, uh, the, the more adult themed shows? That were on the uh, that were on the Netflix uh, the ne ne sorry that were on the Netflix network Netflix network were on Netflix and they were taken off because Disney is starting its own streaming service and their deal with Netflix is ending. Well, it seems that we have a little bit of an answer here, even though we've not addressed those films and they have not told us what's going to go on with those specific series yet. This is actually a pretty strong indication that what I thought was going to be a possibility seems to be coming to fruition. So Marvel and Hulu have set a live action Ghost Rider and Hellstrom series Gabriel Luna to reprise the role of Robbie Reyes an update. Shortly after the announcement of Marvel and Hulu's live action Ghost Rider series. Deadline confirmed that Gabriel Luna would be reprising his role as the titular Flaming Skull anti-hero. Luna portrayed the character in ABC's Marvel series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Luna teased his return on Twitter yesterday when he wrote, Chains are rattling. Earlier this morning he tweeted a skull of flames, continuing to leave us guessing whether or not he would be hopping on the motorcycle again for some demonic action. He officially confirmed his involvement in the new series on Twitter, saying it's an honor to ride again with Marvel and our new partner, Hulu. Marvel Universe is spreading like wildfire on Hulu. Mar Marvel and Hulu announced today that they are expanding their partnership with two new live-action series, Spirits of Avengers, Marvel's Ghost Rider, and Hellstrom. Both are set to debut on the streaming platform in 2020. And whenever I see, you know, anything that has to do with Ghost Rider, it just seems like a much more mature show. It honestly feels like it's going to be much more mature. It's going to be a lot more graphic, a lot more violent. And Hellstrom, I don't really know a whole lot about, but seeing that he has a pen, you know, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a demonic symbol on his chest, something tells me it is also going to be a more adult themed show. So what this seems to indicate is because Hulu now owns a majority stake, or rather that now that Disney owns a majority stake in Hulu, this is where they're going to start to put some of their more, uh, risque shows, some of their more serious shows and Honestly, I thought that they might just try and put everything on their network, but it seems like they're going to have the network be a family exclusive, you know, not just kids content, but literally family friendly content. And Hulu, since now it owns the majority and is probably going to try and buy out even more shares as things go on, looks to be where they're going to part start to put some of their more adult themed shows. So that would be really cool to see, you know, shows like Daredevil be brought back on Hulu, shows like uh, Luke Cage be brought back on Hulu. They can leave Jessica Jones to go die in a ditch because no one cares about that show because God, season two was so bad. And I can't can't believe they're still going forward with a season three. But this is actually extremely interesting because, as I said, it just doesn't really make sense to me for them to split their fans into two services because I think it makes more sense to have everything on your service to make more people want to buy it. However, I then look to their vast library of shows and all the new content that they're creating for the service, and I realize if their end game is indeed to have two services under the same umbrella and have full control over Hulu, this very well might be an extremely beneficial and profitable investment for them to make. But guys, what are y'all thoughts about this? Are you excited about a Ghost Rider show, a Hellstrom series as well? Can two more, again, I, I guess you could say adult-oriented or more for mature audience-oriented series, at least that's what it seems to be this case, starting up on Hulu, coming out in 2020. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And also, do you think that the MCU is going to go in this direction where the, you're going to have the Avengers-type shows set on the Disney Plus network? Again, we've already had uh, the Hawkeye show announced. We've already had... Uh, this <laughs> the WandaVision for some reason show being announced as well. So obviously more family-friendly content in continuity with the MCU films. 
But now we have this announcement too with more Marvel content, but now it's more of the, uh, you know, more mature storytelling and it's going to be on a separate network on Hulu, which they own a majority stake in. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you think is going to happen and what the future of that's going to look like. Guys, if you like this video, smash the like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, let me know your thoughts about the MCU and the future of the MCU. And also, do you think that Avengers Endgame is going to reach the $2 billion mark this weekend? It made over a billion last weekend. Could it make up to $2 billion by this weekend. I honestly think it is very, very possible. And if it makes $2 billion at that point, it is just a waiting game for it to reach that $2.7 billion range in order to take over Avatar as the highest grossing film. Even though I've had an issue with this film, I will say I like it a hell of a lot more than Avatar because good lord, Avatar is awful. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.